All right, hello, this is my second version of the Crit Rive Forge Guard build that I've been using. Um, I have two versions of this, so first off, skip to the gameplay if you want to see what that's about. Um, you'll notice that I do switch some gear around, and that's mostly because I wanted to confirm how much attack speed helped, um, and I also threw on wing guards for a second, but uh, you'll, you'll see what that is when the videos come. Um, I think the optimal play is when you're versing really high level bosses, is to use Leviathan Cleaver at first, and then depending on how long it takes to finish off the boss, it's actually faster to open up your inventory and then switch to Last Laugh to instant execute at 25% HP. Um, yeah, so let's go through this, my current gear setup. Um, I'm just gonna go through this more quickly than before. So basically there's a few things you want to build for one is damage taken over time is applied to armor which you need codex of an sentinel for um, and I think there's like a few passives where that's also the case but my re resistances are capped out so let, let's start off with the gear I'll just go through one by one so I switched from using the last lap to Leviathan cleaver uh, it is much much better than what I was using um, as you see here, I do not have attack speed, and that greatly impacts the weapon. I would say that you have to have melee crit chance so that you have the option to hit the crit cap, because you know, if it's 17% crit chance and you have Foebringer, that makes it 34% crit chance. And if you have 34% crit chance, uh, give me one second here. No, oh, I guess I closed out the window. Yeah, I closed it out. But you only need like 290%. Um, critical strike multiplier not multiplier but additive so here you can see if you add this all up I'm actually over the melee critical strike chance by a fair amount I could probably swap off a full perk um, especially if I had a good blessing or if I had higher rolls so that would be one perk basically freed up um, and then attack speed is like you will definitely notice if you don't have attack speed but the the base damage and the base physical pen on this weapon basically kind of negates it and you'll see that in the video where when you're fighting the small trash packs you basically one to two shot all of them um, versus the other weapon you just swing 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 instant dead um, but you know when you're kill everything in one and two hits it doesn't really matter how fast you're attacking right because a right click is a right click um, so moving on, I do recommend Leviathan Carver. It is worth keeping Last Lap in your inventory just to switch when you're facing really high level bosses. You can just open up inventory, right click, and then boom, they're instantly dead. Um, helmet, I did not find any legendary helmets that I wanted to go for. Um, I think there's like a, a void damage one that you could use as an implicit um, and kind of just use that if you want, but I think that this base armor is better. Um, the bonus damage taken from critical strikes is kind of redundant because the 70% on the two-handed is doubled So you're already crit damage taken capped. So this is basically just an armor stat stick with all of these modifiers put on um, So what would I recommend for perks on here? So you can go with strength you can go with vitality um, You could go with damage with the two-handed sword um, We kind of already have tons of base damage, but you know more never really hurts um I decided to go with mana gained with Rive when I hit one enemy, and that is a pretty rare perk because I wanted to get more forge strikes out. Um, thinking how I do now, I think I think it's okay to go either way. Um, you probably don't need this extra mana, but it's there and it's kind of nice when you need to get Sigils of Hope up before the big heavy hits come out so you have more endurance threshold. Um, increased armor is good, physical resistance is not good, I would switch that out for health. Um, actually, I'm not going to go through this anymore because I have a more optimal build on a different page. This is kind of just to show what I currently am using in the video. Um, so let me talk about, I'll talk about my skills and passives here. Now let's just go to the more optimal build. So, so this is what I'm running right now is this, and what I would like to be running is this. So I would have one second here. Sorry about that. So what I would like to be having is melee attack speed and critical strike chance. And those bottom two, like, I don't know if that much more physical penetration is really worth it. Because we're stacking so high as is. 
um, chances are it's probably better just to put ignite on there instead because you know we have gloves that convert our bleed to ignite chance and there's also probably an option to switch these gloves out with a different legendary base if you can get because right now the only bleed chance we really have other than you know the ones I threw on here um, where is it bleed chance there so two-handed sword at suffix like we put on bleed chance and then we also have the passive from our tree right um, so that is quite a bit that gets converted over to ignite chance so it's it's probably worth it just for the 140 percent increased ignite chance but I'm sure that there's something better as a base that we could use somewhere like we don't really care about the fire damage over time because we're eating all the fire damage and we aren't specking into fire damage anyways so that's basically the weapon um, moving on helm same base helm as before um, I put on the plus I decided to keep the void damage taken as physical um, let me talk about that briefly so when you're playing the game the only thing that really kills you as a forge guard is either one shots or if you get peppered by like 40 little mini range minions and you're kind of just afk for a second um, and the only high spike damage there is is the the avalanche from the cold guys which you know i personally do not run that dungeon so i don't run into them um, everyone runs into the void bosses and then also um Jewelry, I think it is. I forget her name, but she's also void. Like void is common, so having this is a big survivability tool. I do not know if it's better than like straight vitality, for example. Um, and then, so that's void damage. And then I actually have two fire damage taken as physical. So the only other thing that's really dangerous in this game are like the little circles or the giant guys who have the fire shooting things or the little archer guys who shoot little fire arrows really quickly or the medium rider guys who throw out that fire circle that explodes with the spear right so when you think about it everything that's kind of deadly in this game is either void damage or fire damage and we have tons of armor in this build not necessarily in this build but at least as a um a forge guard you would build lots of armor um I'm not seeing the armor stat, but I know it's here somewhere. Whatever, you get the point. Here it is, armor, 7,000, um, which is quite a bit. So we're almost at the armor cap already, um, and that's without all of our passives. Uh, now that I think about it, we probably need to cut back on a couple of percent armor pieces that are on here, but I'm just going to leave it as is for now. Um, I did switch out the shred from the other build to increased armor on here. Um, Seeing as we're basically at the armor mitigation cap already, I would probably switch this back to shred on hit for damage. Um, another option would be block chance and block effectiveness. I learned that that's actually a, a thing that you could go for. So we could roll that on the rings, um, but I decided to do health and endurance threshold. So back to where we were. Void damage taken as physical and fire damage. I believe that that's probably the strongest play to being tankier because this build does plenty of damage or at least with aoe stuff um so you just need to survive and that's been kind of the theme i've been seeing with this game is that everything kind of dies as long as you just live um other than the kind of i'm not gonna say exploity but overtuned classes that just one shot screen wide aoe's um yeah so moving on to the next perk mana gained when you use rive i decided to just keep this because forge strike actually does a fair amount of damage um, and it kind of depends on how you look at things like do you use rive to build up physical pen strikes just for forge strike or is forge strike kind of just there as a filler and you just spam rive the whole time but if you look at rive like it only scales at 100 percent damage effectiveness there's a lot of multipliers in the build with physical pen more hit on enemies strike two does more damage another global multiplier there's like three different multipliers like just there and then there's another one here so you have like four different multipliers but the base scaling is not great um, so it's kind of a, a weird skill um, so I decided to keep the mana gain on Rive that extra mana lets me cast sigils of hope more often which gives us lots of endurance threshold it's more of like a another oh no survivability tool plus the extra mana we can use on lunge just to like get around a little bit more um, and not worry about being out of mana for that. So increased armor, increased health. Um, 
anywhere where I can take percent increased health, I do. Um, yeah, and increased armor, like we're probably overcapped, etc. Moving on. Um, amulet. So you can either go with the attack speed one or the oracle one. Um, I decided to go with the oracle because damage over time taken is the other threat. Other than one shots, it's really high damage taken over times, and a whole bunch of little ranged minions are the only problems I've really run into with this build. So I picked the damage over time. Um, yeah, and I just picked damage perks that line up, and then I did pick the implicit, not implicit, but the, um, what's it called, sealed affix. I did pick frailty. That basically will put you at the frailty cap on whatever target we're hitting. So that's just another layer of defensives. So if you have that sealed here, I think you can seal it on your helmet. Um, we can't seal it on our weapon because of what we have for build, but you can put it on like this codex. It can randomly roll on there, etc. I would try to have that somewhere at least one spot. Um, resistances. I decide to put physical and poison resistance because we have the boots that decrease our physical resistance in exchange for more damage. Um, I have endurance health, endurance health. Uh, thinking about it now, it's probably better if you take off either a health or an endurance threshold, pull those resistances off, and then you could put on um, armor shred, or you could put on um, ignite on here. Ignite on hit for more damage. Um, those are options, something you could do. I, this is what I have, so I'm just I basically kind of just left it as is. Um, chest piece, Titan Heart. Uh, it's basically just a gimme. Um, and then for perks, you can either go for a strength for a little bit more armor and then increased damage, or you can go for a vitality with more survivability. Thinking about it now, I should probably go with vitality instead. Um, vitality also applies to necrotic and poison resistance. So if you have more vitality, you might not even need this poison resistance perk on your gear or like a necrotic, um, let me see, do I have a necrotic one? I think these are all physical resistances, but you get the idea, is that if you can stack vitality, it'll remove that, so let's do that now, vitality, and then we're just gonna leave it at tier five because we went for tier four rise. So that bumps up our poison and necrotic resistance. Um, so we have it from a blessing, the amulet, and then just the vitality gives a plus 33%. So we could get like a lower roll poison resistance and be fine, for example. Or maybe it's even low enough where we could have it as tier two and we could seal it away. And then we could have frailty as really high. Not that having high frailty is any better than tier one frailty. Uh, moving on, four levels to Rive. Um, the reason why is because with Rive, there are so many multipliers and attack speed buffs. Um, and the more attack speed you have, the more physical pen you get, the more physical pen you get, the more hits, more your hits hit for. Um, the more attack speed, you know, the more scrap metal you get. Um, the more ignite stacks you get off that you can consume. So it's you really want as much of this stuff as you can get. And then it's just also another melee damage option there. Um, and then percent health, percent armor, pretty self-explanatory. Moving on, belt. I did go for physical damage because it's the only thing that like lines up with our build. I left the other slot open because I honestly don't really care what else it is. It just doesn't matter. Um, there's maybe some experimental things that you could try there, but I didn't see any that were too notable. Um, the boots, move speed, basically you have to have that all the time. I just went with a tribute of strength. Like once again, you could go with vitality instead. Um, and then I did the ox, not the ox, but the hybrid health that you always have on no matter which slot you can, and increased armor. And then you can also have that on the gloves. Um, legendary boots, why did I pick these boots? Plus 100% melee critical strike multiplier. So we're gonna crit on every hit. So with 200% crit, we're doing double damage. With 300% crit, we're doing 300% damage. So going from 200% to 300% is a, you know, that's like a 50% damage buff. So once you're crit capped, critical strike multiplier starts to become really valuable. Um, I think that's even something that we could go for here, right? Like crit critical strike multiplier. Yeah, I would, I would honestly consider switching this out instead of physical damage. Let's do that. Critical strike multiplier instead just because that gives us that much more damage. 
Um, I'm trying to think of where else that could even go, right? Like crit, critical strike chance. Yeah, there's no multiplier here, just avoidance and chance. But yeah, so if you can, yeah, like I said, if you can free up perks, it gives you options for a lot more damage. So yeah, I'm gonna keep that, that's good. All right, moving on, uh, legendary chance, yep. And then it also has a decent built-in move speed. Um, the minus 75% physical resistance is a little bit rough, but we have talent. Whenever you get hit within the last four seconds, you gain 40% physical resistance. So we're basically already good. Plus our passive gives us 35%. And there's some other skills that um, if we check here, physical resistance, we can just stack idols um, if we do need to make up that physical resistance. Um, the only thing is that you are losing some damage by like using up these two, three slots, but it's fine, right? Like the vitality makes you tank here instead of like going for damage. Um, so yeah, that's the boots. Gloves, I think I had briefly talked about these already. Bleed chance converted to ignite. We kind of have a lot of built in bleed chance already as is. So just turning that into ignite, right? That's like, 227 plus this that just means that every time we hit we get a lot of ignite stacks that gives us a lot of physical pen um yeah if, if probably on the codex i would try and get those if you could um mostly just strength vitality or if you want to like try and get lucky and get like frailty to round out your build um yeah uh, Codex Emery Sentinel, I always get this, minus melee co mana cost is for Forge Strike, and it also helps with lunge, I believe, right? Lunge, melee skill, cost mana, yeah. So it helps with that too. Um, rings, so there are a few choices here. So if you need more necrotic resistance, you can pick up ivory rings, um, and that will let you pick different perks elsewhere. Like I used to have necrotic on the amulet, I think, and I managed to switch it to an ivory ring so that I could use that elsewhere. And then now that I'm capped on necrotic resistance, I decided to go with a vitality ring, right? For more poison resistance, and it also gives a little bit more necrotic resistance just because it's vitality. The health regen is a dead perk for us because of the passive on Titan Heart. You do not regenerate health, which can be kind of rough. Um, so we basically survive off of leeching, which is why I have melee damage leeched as health. Um, we have so much attack speed on this build, I feel like that extra leech is going to offset it. Um, if you really want, you can swap out the strength for attack speed, but yeah, I, I decided the strength also gives armor too, so I'll just, I'll keep those two as my primary for this ideally. And critical strike chance, physical damage, critical strike chance, and I decided to go with endurance threshold and health as like trying to be more tanky. Um, if I needed to put the physical and poison resistance, I would probably pull them down here and swap out those. Um, just because your endurance threshold is limited by, like you can stack endurance, but if you don't have endurance threshold, it's not doing quite that much. Um, yeah, so I've already talked about the idols briefly kind of when I was talking out before, but once more, fire damage just for being, um, fire damage just for being more tanky against the one-shot mechanics which are usually void and fire if you want you could put on like a cold three across thing two times if you happen to be doing that dungeon um and then i did stick with the crit multiplier that's kind of a iffy thing like critical strike multiplier with rive only um like Rive doesn't scale that much off of damage, right? So it's not really getting us too much, but it's it's something and it, it works with our build, so whatever. Um, skills, I did change a few things, not really, but kind of. So keep Volatile Reversal on cooldown, increases the damage of your dots, gives you increased dodge rating, which is converted to armor. Um, honestly, we do so little dot damage and we don't really need that much more armor you could probably swap this out for something else with this build. Um, one reason why you would want to keep it though is because global attack speed and global cast speed. Um, the cast speed helps with casting Sigils of Hope a little bit, attack speed for a Forge Strike and Rive. So you kind of just keep this up while you're in melee or you can use it as like a, a teleport around juking things skill. Um, healing hands. 
So you want to put points here in Cleric's Hammer. That gives us Healing Hands chance on melee hit, 100%. And then in the bottom right, Healing Hands converted to a melee attack hits a wide arc in front of you. Now scales with melee damage instead of spell damage. So now we're getting a little bit of benefit off that. I don't exactly remember where we have melee damage. I don't think we actually have any. I think it's all physical damage, but it's whatever, right? We mostly want it just to be fire damage on hit. I mean, honestly, you could probably skip this, but I did want to pick up these two for the plus 48% damage and increased area. Same reason why I went down here, just for the increased area and the mana cost. A mana cost up here on the right. I do not care about Bane of Evil. We do not have spell damage, so we don't really care about that. I went here for these two. So you can immobilize void enemies so they don't run away. Um, and then this decreases the amount of void damage you take by 10% and decreases the amount of necrotic damage you take by 10%. So you're basically using healing hands all the time. Um, so you're just, you know, doing a free 10% increased damage versus void enemies and undead enemies and taking less damage from them. Necrotic damage, sorry, not necessarily undead and void enemies, it's void damage. Um, yeah. And then this is kind of dead because we don't really stack healing effectiveness at all. But, you know, what else are you going to do with the perks? Moving on, Rive. So this one's kind of tricky. Um, so the towns you want to pick, challenge, like you always put two points here, one point there, one point there. You always pick up Faux Cleaver, and I would say you should always pick up Scrap Metal. Um, and then I would always pick up Flame Drinker down here, unless you're going for a pure Ignite build, which in case, you know, you're missing out on another kind of multiplier here, right? If you're going for an Ignite build with this. But I mean, it, it's workable. But um, I personally pick up Assassin Sustenance because I do not have the leeching on my gloves. If you want, you could honestly take this off. And then you could put it here for extra damage. Um, so why do I have three points in here instead of four points into here? Um, because you every hit is versus an ignited enemy but only the second hit is versus it is versus right for a multiplier even though this is a 25 percent multiplier versus 15 you're hitting more hits with this and getting more value out of it because the target is basically always ignited um the arg other argument you could make is the strike two area damage offsets it. Um, so I'm going to leave that up to you, personal preference. Basically, it's just pennies at this point comparing the two. Um, the area probably offsets any damage that you would gain from going with savagery instead. So if you really want, you can cut that out, put two extra points there. But I have um, leech as a choice, and I prefer just to have the baseline. Um, and then I put one point here because it's just another global multiplier. And I think that that 5% damage is going to offset um, that little bit of extra chance to have another little bit of multiplier. And honestly, it's probably better to go Iron Reach instead of this, but I just wanted to have more widespread, like guaranteed, no matter what happens, I'm getting this 5% critical strike, mul not critical strike, multiple, blah, multiple percentage damage with Rive. Um, down here this is just another on hit effect um it may not even be worth it but you know we have what 300 percent on hit effect cause ignite so three percent three stacks of ignite if this hits and we do three percent penetration per ignite consumed so three stacks of ignite with our every first hit um yeah and that's nine percent physical penetration so is this worth nine percent physical penetration every time we do our first swing, which has a 40% attack speed buff and happens quite a bit, I would say probably, yeah. Um, Armor Shred is just like a leap talent. Maybe you want to put another point here. I don't think so because it's only percentage. If it was like plus one, plus two armor, maybe. Um, Cadence, why did I pick this? Uh, if you, so you do not, uh, how do I say this? You only need so we, we want to first and second attack the most because that gives us the most attack speed. But if we don't get our third strike off before the ignite's expired, we basically waste that physical pen. So if you want more consistent, lower levels of flame drinker, I would take this off, especially like at the beginning of the game when you have lower attack speed. 
just so you get one, two, three, um, especially for mo small mob packs that die quicker, you don't want to do like one, two, one, two, and then the mobs all die, or like one, two, one, and then they all die. You want to like hit that third hit every time you can. So up to you whether you want this. I kind of like it because on bosses, you're basically sitting there as a target dummy, so you get, you don't lose out on basically hitting in the third swing more often than you need to is how I'll phrase it. Um, yeah. And then challenge pulls in enemies. So every time enemy gets pulled in, it's kind of like a pseudo stun where they just kind of get shifted around your body so they don't auto attack. Um, so it's a good like defensive maneuver. Um, you can use it to pull bosses out of mechanics, etc. And you can like use it to like group up range there just out of range if you just keep holding right click and they'll eventually like inch closer and then they'll all get sucked in. Forge Strike. So the reason why this is in the build is because added damage effectiveness is 500%. Um, it also scales off of strength and attunement. So that's good. Um, but yeah, it just has some nice talent. So you you always you have this has a really high base crit chance. Not that it matters because we're crit capped, but we have 45% crit multiplier plus 100. So we have an extra 145% crit multiplier with this. And then we also have a damage multiplier versus bosses and rares, which are the only things that really matter. So 25%, you know, of that 500% added damage effectiveness, another multiplier for 40%. Um, and then we also have detonating ground. So if you don't have that 21st point, I would skip that, that point. I kind of just put that there because this one's already full. Um, if you really want, you could go for this, but I do not have any added stun chance, so I wouldn't get any value out of it. Um, so, yeah. Um, cast detonating ground. Detonating ground does like half of your initial damage. So we have like 50% multiplier plus a 40% multiplier plus a 25% multiplier. So we have lots of multipliers and we have lots of added damage scaling effectiveness. Um, I think they buffed it this cycle from 400 to 500% for this ability. Um, and then the reason why I don't take put to the sword, if you're going a dot build, I would definitely go this because it would make use of all the extra crit multiplier. And I will say that this spear forge crit multiplier does apply to this for physical penetration for bleed. And it's a little bit, and it's kind of significant, but it does suck not having this, but missing out on that crit chance, it's too much, especially with how many multipliers we have here. Um, it would apply physical penetration for bleed, but we don't need our dots to do damage. We need more dots. So it's just a waste. So we're giving up crits for 35% attack speed on one ability is not worth it, especially for how hard this hits, which you'll see in the videos a little bit. Sigils of Hope. Uh, this is the generic, basically every paladin, not paladin, every sen sentinel player takes this. Um, so why don't I have this last one? We have so much attack speed and cast speed that that cooldown effect kind of ruins it. And that increased mana cost is not helpful. So yeah, 30% cast speed already, plus the ones that we have built in. Um, we kind of just don't need this. So I put that extra point up here into Decree of Flame. Um, if you have 20 points, this is how I would do it. Otherwise, I put two there. Um, sometimes Sigil Summon when enemies die. This is a 100% increased damage for you and all of your allies. So if you're in a group, that's 100% damage buff for your team. I do not know if this is multiplicative because it does not say. Um, Iron Sigils, and then this just adds a whole bunch of endurance for you and your team. So what, 75 times 4 is like 300 or something? Um, extra endurance. And then just the duration because keeping this buff up is annoying. Uh, so why don't I put points in meditation? Because we do not regenerate health, so it's a waste of space. Um, why don't we pick this? Because we need multiple sigils for the damage buff. Um, you could pick this if you're concerned about getting spiked, but chances are you're going to have so much leech rolling that anything that cuts you down to half HP, you're going to like be rolling up quickly enough that's not going to matter. Um, and that 200 health is not actually that big especially since we're not running very much healing effectiveness like other other people who would normally run this would be. Um, yeah, so that is the skills. And you do not need to keep healing hands on your bar, so I just put lunch for mobility. Um, if you're playing versus like Lagan or other tough bosses, I would put on Rebuke. 
because um, when they do that one shot ability that like sweeps slowly across the screen by the way if you're having issues dodging that just watch the boss mechanic um, personally I stand on the tentacles holding down right click and left click until it dies and then whenever that ability comes by I just use rebuke um, it basically makes it so you don't die to those one shot stuff so let me switch this back to lunge which is our mobility skill here and yeah so this is like what I would view as optimal I'm sure that there's a way to include ward or some other more defensive layers like I don't know how the block perk really works um, but yeah 6% leech from just the gloves and then also from the passive on the skill so that's kind of our defensive so 10k 13k like it's okay but other classes have it a lot better um, yeah so that's all the skills let's go into the passives now so I've said this before in my other video but I'll say it again damage is not an issue that we have with forge guard it's not dying so I always pick up hammer and anvil and you just sit in anvil stance which you, where you take 25% less damage um, that's pretty much all I have to say. Uh, I just picked this because it reduces the damage we take. as a lot of points wasted for like throwing damage and stuff, but you kind of have to, I would say. Um, battle hardened armor when you're hit. Uh, this is just flat armor, and this is very good because it's 140% bleed and 140% ignite chance for us, and that all gets converted to ignite chance. So this is like 280% ignite chance which is, this is the majority of where our Ignite comes from in our current build. Um, might, I put points in this because 12% increased health is pretty big and strength is definitely not wasted. One point to Iron Reflexes because that talent on Volatile Reversal, sorry, let me get it here one second. Down here, Dodge Rating while on cooldown 360. So it converts that 360 into even more armor. So we're basically at the armor cap just from um, our passive a 3% increased armor when we get hit and then also um, that volatile reversal cooldown also helps out with that so dodge rating to armor um, and I guess if you're short on crit strike chance for like your melee abilities you could go down here um, this is probably pretty good but I just don't have the points for it like I need to be defensive um, so infinite bulwark so I've said this in the last video, but armor on potion use. So we use potion, we get tankier, we find more potions, we use more potions, we stay tanky. And then this, we take less damage over time, we have physical resistance, and then if we take the potion, it doubles, and then we also find more potions, um, etc. It just kind of loops into the, each other. So we basically have to take this just because damage over time is really strong the later on you get. Um, Avatar of War, this is just because like 3% increased armor for each hit you have taken in the last 10 seconds, you have increased armor when you get hit, it just kind of works with our build and we are melee damage so we take this. And it's only one point so it's basically a gimme. Molded by the Forge, um, increased melee attack speed with a two-handed sword, which is what we run, so you know, 40% attack speed there. Um, Paladin Tree, so I do all penetration here. Um, if you're short on elemental resistances, like you're leveling up, you can put points into here um, because the attunement uh, forge strike actually scales with attunement for damage. So I would say when you're playing the game and you're leveling up um, level one through like 60, I would do a minion build with like attunement and strength and it doesn't really matter because it's easy enough to level. And then once you get to um, level 60, I would switch to an on hit um, damage over time build and I would use wing guards and like a, a sword with attack speed and like a flat damage on it and I would just swing 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 and I wouldn't have you know damage increased taken physical boots and stuff like that leveling up and then eventually the late game you would transition to this where you do melee crit chance and you go for a crit build with rive um, I'm sure there's a place for dot build but yeah, I haven't actually tried it myself. Uh, I mean, I did briefly, but I didn't like go full into it to see how far I could go. So, and then, so full points there. One point Divine Bolt, because it's another on-hit melee effect. Valor, I'd put five points in just to get up to here. I did decide to put one point into Blinding Light, just because the blind chance is just another... 
another like defensive layer, I guess we'll call it, right? Like maybe it saves your life once or twice or something. Um, and then the endurance, if you're short on endurance, I would take points out of Valor and I would put them into here until you have enough endurance or I put like five points into here just to get up Sigils of Hope. Um, if you're really desperate, you can put points into here, but you're basically just spending attribute points just for resistances at that point in health. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's my cat. So here, just to get to Volatile Reversal, put five points. That Void Resistance kind of like is really nice for getting us capped out, and that Physical Resistance helps offset the boots that we have. And then here, I do eight points into Juggernaut. That Void Resistance plus all the other Void Resistances we've taken puts us pretty high up on the scale for being resistant. Um, armor Clad reduces damage taken from nearby enemies. You just stand near the bosses, you take less damage from them. And it's like a multiplicative, yes, with other modifiers. Fearless, um, just more vitality, and the vitality gives poison and a necrotic resistance. And then, since we don't really care about our mobility skill, we don't put points into this. And then, this is very good, it gives us mana when we use, we use Rive and Health. And last week, we put a point in Blade Master um, just to cap off the tree. Uh, do note that if you have to pick between this attack speed talent and this one, right, 5% versus 6%, so this one is a little bit better. Plus, you know, flat strength, flat vitality, and then you should you should go this, this, and then once you get high enough, you come back for vitality. Uh, one thing I would possibly change with the build is I would take one point from somewhere. Let's see. Let's. I'll just take it from Thornmail for a little bit of armor. So if you want to go slightly more damage, you could pick this. Um, a one second cooldown of just another on hit effect with Axe Throw. We don't really care about the damage of Axe Throw, it's basically the Divine Bolt of the generic Sentinel Tree. Um, yeah, so that is the passives and the skills. And like I said for the video gameplay just after this, um, you'll see that I basically wanted to two-shot everything with this Leviathan Carver, like at least all the melee mobs. Like I hit very high, even with just Rive. Um, so if you can get this with critical strike chance and melee attack speed on it, you are basically set. Like you should have no problem um, clearing corruption. Um, and the only other note I would say would be make sure you get as much of the ox and like wherever you can percentage health, because that boosts our HP all the way up to 2.9K compared to um, how I am on my other build where I'm only at 1.8k, right? That's like a thousand health, which is very, very tanky. So let's look at just defensive last second here before I go. So 10.6k versus go to defensives versus like 6.5k. So that is what going from six to 10, that is what 50% of six is 3k and that's like 9k. So this is like more than a 50% buff to tankiness just by getting all those health percentage nodes. Um, so I'm sure if I had this best in slot build, I could probably push higher corruption, like maybe, I mean, I can already push like 250, fine, but that's as far as I bothered to grind. Like, um, yeah, and that's it. Um, if you're still sticking around and you skipped ahead to the video parts, I'll talk about myself briefly here. Um, after this weekend, I'm probably gonna take a break from last epoch so you won't see any videos from me at least for a while um i'm okay with the state of forge guard it just kind of sucks when you see someone else playing screen wide clear aoe abilities and they're critting for hundreds of thousands and millions and they're pushing you know 300 400 corruption and then you look at the leaderboard ladders for sentinel and there's literally zero forge guards um that was kind of one of my goals was to get into the leaderboards this season but it's just I don't I'm not a bug abuser man like with the ward like I do not think there is a place for forge guard or um, Void knights to be using ward or at least they shouldn't want to um, But there's just no other defensive layers for us to go to right like we could do more endurance threshold, but it's just Like we're, we're capped on armor right and we have all the health that we could possibly get I just don't feel like that there's more I could trade damage for survivability I guess like all these strength nodes and just go to vitality um, but other than that, like, yeah, it, and it really sucks whenever you sacrifice offense for defense, so I, I don't know, it's weird. Like, I'm missing out on strength and vitality here on the primary stats just for, like, utility and damage taken. It's it feels a little rough, but, oh well, it is what it is. Um, yeah, so I hope you 
had an okay time watching this. This is like kind of a monologue video for myself to also talk. So I will stop here. Uh, goodbye then. Thanks.
Just the 